behind this unassuming little interface lies a veritable Swiss army knife of video tools that any serious video professional can use. Are they expensive? No. Will they get the job done? Yes. Are they quick and convenient? Yes. Can I think of a third yes? Yes. I want to start by thanking the sponsors of today's video, Video Proc Converter, the software I'm going to share with you today. But I've been using this software long before they contacted me. And since then, they've added some AI features that I know you're going to love. In a time where AI is everywhere and I'm all over it, I'm always looking for tools to make my workflow better and the final outcome more impressive and upscaling images and video, of course, big topic of discussion. And you've got a wide range of choices, don't you? Anywhere from free to not at all free. And of course, a wide variety of results. But today I'm sharing Video Pro Converter AI with you. And upscaling is just one of the many things it will do. And it is what we're focusing on today. But trust me, I'm going to have at least one more video on this incredible tool because if working with video and video files and downloading video source material is at all a part of your AI creative workflow, you're going to freaking love this tool. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video because it's coming up in days. Today, because of a lot of CPU and GPU constraints, people who are interested in generating AI art and animations are sort of forced to create things at a lower resolution, maybe in the 512 by something arena. And then they're going to have to upscale it if they want it to look nice or maybe even add some interpolation or both to make the thing smooth and beautiful at the same time. Video Pro Converter AI does both those things exceptionally well, and it really couldn't be simpler. If you have an image or a video you'd like to upscale, you just click on Super Resolution. And now you can drag and drop your image and video right in here to this interface and choose from two different models to do the upscaling depending on the source material. We'll get into that when we start looking at the source material. First, let's expand this interface so it's full screen so that we can see the best preview image possible. Let's start with this image that's 512 by 512 of a human eye and let's see how we can upscale this thing. We can just drag the image into the interface and it pops right up here with the side-by-side -side comparison. On the left, you see the resolution of 512 by 541. That's actually the image resolution here. And on the other side, you see the preview of the upscaled image. In this case, the resolution of uh, 1024 by 902 of an upscale of two times. I can also choose three times and four times, and you still get the preview here. Now, what I wish we could do here is scroll in and zoom in and out, which I'm used to doing in some of the other tools to, to see the finer details. You can't do that and there's really no panning. This is the image preview that you get, but you can definitely see that the details are there. And the upscaling is pretty fast for images like this. Now I mentioned the two different types of models. One is called reality and one is called anime. So guess which types of images you would use for each. That's right. So in this case, I'm gonna go right back to reality. <laughs> So let's take a look at the settings real quick. We have, first of all, the GPU you're gonna use. I only have the one, which is the GeForce 3090. The denoise level option is only available in the anime model. And here's where you choose how much you wanna upscale, two times, three times, or four times. Or instead of upscaling, you can choose to enhance the image, but keep it the same size. So if you have a blurry image and you wanna bring back some of the details, but not change the size, you would use this. But we wanna look at the upscaling. So let's go back to scale. We'll go to three times. So we're gonna take this 512 by 451 image, and we're gonna pop it up to 1536 by 1353 and we'll see what kind of detail we can maintain. The preview itself looks pretty good. So we're going to click run and you'll see it chooses its best option here. It went by pretty fast. So here's the upscaled, take it about to the same size, the upscaled next to the original 512 by 451. So pretty nice job in retaining the details, wouldn't you say? Let's do another one. Here's an image of a parrot at 512 by 503. So here's the original and here's the upscale. So if we look closely around the eyes and sort of on the beak, we see some of these, the textures that kind of get a little bit lost and smoothed out here, but still we got a nice detailed image. 1024 by 1006. Let's pop it all the way up to four times and check it out. There is another way to preview these things. Instead of side by side, we can click right here and now we've got a slider where we can go back and forth. Again, it would be wonderful if I could use my mouse wheel and zoom in on this thing, but you still get a pretty decent preview. So this is from 512 to 2048. Let's run it and see what it looks like. So here's our 512 Parrot, here's our 2048 Parrot, and we're not even zoomed in all the way. So let's go to 100%, all zoomed in. From a 512 image to this, we do see feathers, we see individual cracks in the beak. 
It's not like we've lost a ton and coming from such a low resolution image, I'm impressed. Well, let's look at video now. And to do that, I'm gonna take an old animation I did when I was first starting out. And so the frame rates were low and it was kind of low resolution, not very detailed animation. And so what we're gonna do is we're first gonna bring this in. We're gonna use the interpolation feature to make the video smoother. So let's open that up. So we'll just drag this thing in here. I think it's only like a second long. So when we pop this into video proc, we've got your 12 frames per second original on the left and whatever we decide over here for the frames per second is previewed on the right. So let's just start with maybe two times frame rate. Again, we're gonna choose the GPU that we have, which is the 3090. This particular video doesn't have any scene changes, so this isn't really relevant. I'm gonna leave de-interlacing alone. I'm gonna leave slow motion alone for now and let's just run it. Okay, so side by side, you can see how beautifully smooth this is over here. So now we're gonna use the slow motion feature to slow it down a little bit so we can enjoy it for a little bit longer. So this time I'm gonna go back to the settings and this time I'm gonna click slow motion and then click run. When I first ran this process, I was hoping it would be smooth and slow. It would do the interpolation and the slow down at the same time, which doesn't seem to be how it works. So what we've got here is this animation on the left slowed down by twice, but we've still got the jerky frame rate. So can we use the interpolation feature in this program to bring the smoothness back? Let's do it. So I've now added the clip, which we made twice as slow. The frame rate is still the same. So let's click on three times this time and click run and see how smooth we can get this. Look at that, that's awesome. It's it's smooth, it's slow, it's not jerky, we've still got detail. Now we could upscale this thing if we want to, shall we? We're gonna go back to the upscaler and now we've dropped that video that we just did that's smooth and slow. Let's preview it real quick. The AI is working so it's kind of sluggish a little bit, but here we go, we've got a preview anyway. Let's do the side-by-side -side comparison. We do seem to be losing some of the details like in here, if you see the water splashes, again, if we could zoom in, it would be great. Let's also keep in mind that the original video wasn't crisp and clear either. It was a 512 by 512 resolution image. Here's our side by side with our 512 animation slowed down by two on the left, and then our interpolated and upscaled version of it on the right. I think it does a pretty good job. All right, let's take a look at some normal footage, not AI. So on our left, we have a 1920 by 1080 HD video. And then on the right, we have the preview of that upscale two times to 3840 by 2060. Let's do the side by side. Over here, you see it's a little, you can see the sharpness happening. A little blurry over here and it's sharp over here and we're not losing any of the details of the fur. Because the original video is of good quality, the upscale is of great quality. So this is a 10 second clip at 1920 by 1080 and let's run that. And here's where we get to notice that this thing does take time. This is probably gonna take about two and a half minutes to calculate. You do see it is choosing the NVIDIA hardware, obviously, to do the process, but AI is at work here. And even the really expensive AI upscaling solutions take time to do their thing. But here is our now 4K upscaled version of that HD video. Now, I don't even have a 4K monitor. I don't know if you do, so I don't know if you're gonna get the richness of this, but I can tell you that this looks fantastic on my screen for an upscale. Video Pro Converter is a piece of software I've been using long before they reached out to me to ask me to share it with you. And since then, they've added the AI feature. So I was super excited to do it and I'm even more super excited about the quality. The upscaling is just one piece of this puzzle. I've said that there's lots of other features in this program that I want to share with you, but today I wanted to focus on the upscaling. So do stay tuned for the follow-up on this. But the amount of utility you get from this piece of software, which is a fraction of a fraction of the cost of some of the better known upscalers. This does that and so much more. And if you want to try it out for yourself, I've given you a link in the description below that will give you access to a fully functional version of the program for 30 days. So you'll be able to fully explore all the features with no limitations for a month before you decide to pay anything. I don't know how you get more fair than that. And truly, I use it all the time and not just for upscaling. And again, if you use video on an ongoing basis and use video clips and need to do some quick editing here and there and don't want to run a big NLE every time you do that, you got to check out these other features. Stay tuned for the follow-up. If you subscribe now, I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you do not, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will...